New tonight, a WBTV investigation has uncovered new questions about the handling of a controversial lawsuit. It was filed and settled within just one hour on the day before Thanksgiving. This all has to do with the Silent Sam statue, which was toppled on the campus of UNC Chapel Hill in 2018. This fall, the UNC Board of Governors agreed to give the statue and millions of dollars to a pro-Confederate group. That agreement is now the subject of controversy and criticism. Chief Investigative Reporter Nick Oxner has obtained documents that one expert calls into question the actions of the judge who approved this settlement. Nick, tell us more here. Yeah, Jamie, Maureen, when the Silent Sam statute fell on UNC's campus in August 2018, no one knew what would happen to it until the day before Thanksgiving this past year, when the UNC Board of Governors made a surprise announcement it had approved a settlement with a group called the Sons of Confederate Veterans. That called for the system to hand over the statute and $2.5 million. The board approved the settlement before a lawsuit was even filed. And when it did get to court, it was approved by Judge Alan Bedore, a two-time Chapel Hill alum whose father, Dick Bedore, was UNC's longtime athletic director. Text messages obtained by WBTV through a public records request show Judge Alan Bedore was in frequent touch with a lawyer for the Board of Governors in the days leading up to his approval of the surprise lawsuit. I met with the lawyers in this case. Bedore acknowledged meeting with the lawyers at a hearing last month after he approved the settlement, but didn't disclose the frequency of his interactions in the case. The text messages show Bedore and UNC's lawyer, Ripley Rand, law school classmates, discussed the case at least five times, including three phone calls and two in-person meetings, one that involved both Rand and the lawyer for the Sons of Confederate Veterans, neither of which, it appears, took place in judges' chambers. It's just not the way the system normally works. Charles Jay is a professor at Indiana University School of Law who specializes in judicial ethics. The problem here is that there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff uh, that makes me anxious in a system that really is ordinarily devoted to transparency. Specifically, Jay said, when judges are involved in cases before they're filed in court, they have an obligation to recuse themselves. In this case, I think what seems to have happened that's odd is that the judge sort of sees his role as judge beginning before the case is filed and continuing on after it's filed, and that's pretty unusual. Bedore declined multiple requests for an interview through a spokeswoman even when asked specifically about his apparent violation of two parts of the North Carolina Judicial Code of Conduct. Rand, the attorney, forwarded a request for comment for this story to his client, the UNC system, where a spokesman issued a statement saying in part, quote, these communications are in full compliance with the rules of professional conduct for attorneys and the North Carolina Code of Judicial Conduct. But Jay, the professor, disagrees. It is perfectly normal to agree to sign off on settlements that are satisfactory to both parties. But when a judge is actively a part of that process before there is a process, uh, it, 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 you know, I think it would make me understandably uneasy. Now, while Bedore produced his text messages in response to our record request, he didn't produce his phone records, even though they'd also be responsive to what we asked for. We've posted the text messages, and we are posting the text messages and screenshots online at WBTV.com, so you can read them for yourself. Guys, back to you. We will look for those. Nick, thank you. Now, we do want to note that both WBTV and Nick Oxner, respectively, have been plaintiffs in public records lawsuits that have been before Bedore in court.